Kate gets her wiggle on as she takes part in a communications exercise with paramedics in Coventry but William is a little more reluctant. With two young children at home, she's probably well used to all the singing and dancing that goes into keeping youngsters entertained. And today the Duchess of Cambridge put those skills to good use as she performed a wiggle dance move during a communications training session with paramedics at Coventry University. Kate, 36, who was visiting the city with the Duke of Cambridge, proved she was a good sport as she joined in with the session, although William looked a little more reluctant than his wife. After arriving, unusually, by train on Tuesday morning, accompanied by a small entourage, the pair arrived at their first engagement at Coventry Cathedral to cheers from hundreds of flag-waving school children. There they were presented with a note from a little girl in the crowd, which read, If you weren't royals what would be your dream job? When George and Charlotte grow up, what would you like them to achieve? The Duchess also came to the rescue of a ten-year-old boy who felt unwell after waiting three hours in the cold to catch a glimpse of the royal. When she spotted that he was not well, the soon-to-be mother of three turned to one of her police protection officers, who came to the rescue with a brown paper bag. Princess Kate came over and gave him a sick bag. Our little Craig, said Carol Flynn, a learning mentor at the school. I think he was a little bit overcome. The Duchess had met Craig Skipper, the pupil at Corpus Christi Primary School, during the royal couple's walkabout outside Coventry Cathedral. M.S. Flynn said, he went quite pale. She came over to speak to him, and noticed he was not very well. She asked if he was okay. She bent down, and was concerned. The Duchess then went over to talk to one of her police bodyguards, and came back with a brown paper bag of the type used by cafes for taking away coffee and sandwiches. It was lovely of her, said M.S. Flint. She really took time with him. You can't tell she is a mum, and has got that caring side. Fortunately the bag turned out not to be necessary. He is a little bit better now, said M.S. Flint. Mother-to-be Kate looked radiant on Tuesday, stepping out in the bright pink mulberry coat she previously wore twice during her pregnancy with Princess Charlotte, once on a visit to the 9 over 11 memorial in New York in December 2014, then again at the Stephen Lawrence Center in Deptford in March 2015, her final engagement before giving birth in May. Outside the cathedral the Duchess also revealed that when it comes to football, there's no gender imbalance at Kensington Palace, as both George, 4, and Charlotte, 2, own miniature Aston Villa kits. Taylor Mosley, 9, said, I said to them that I'm a Villa fan, because I know William is a Villa fan. He said he wants Sam Johnson to be our goalkeeper forever. Brian Milan by, also 9, said, Kate told me that George and Charlotte love putting on Villa kits. I told her I am an Arsenal fan, so I don't really like Villa kits. Taylor added, she said, I have to be loyal to my husband. When William and Kate were last in the Midlands, they were given whistles during a visit to a famous factory. On seeing the royal couple again, Connie Hudson, the wife of the High Sheriff of the West Midlands who was among the welcoming committee at the cathedral, said she asked William, did you actually give the whistles to the children or did you chicken out? He choked. We did give them but they soon found their way into a cupboard because of the noise. Mrs. Hudson said afterwards, I said to the Duchess that she blossoming because she was just getting over the awful sickness when we last saw her. She's doing well now and it's an exciting year to look forward to with the baby and the wedding. What's not to like? A group of school children from the local Sacred Heart School gave the couple a noisy welcome during their tour of the city today. Among them was Darcy Hayes, 9 who gave the Duchess some bright orange flowers. She said her son George will love the flowers because he loves orange and police colors. I told him I had an American Girl doll for Christmas and William said Charlotte loves dolls. They were nice and cheerful. Fellow pupil missing in action or mean, 9, added, they didn't seem like people who are too busy for other people. She seemed really nice. The royal couple started their day by visiting the ruins of Coventry Cathedral which was destroyed by bombing during World War I, I, but now stands again as a symbol of hope and peace. Youngsters waving Union flags had lined the nave of the former place of worship which still has many of its walls intact, although the roof is gone. In a poignant moment, William and Kate stopped in front of the replica of the chart cross, spotted in the aftermath of the bombing on November 14, 1940, which was formed from two timbers that fell from the roof. 
The couple then took part in a Coventry litany of reconciliation, inspired by the cathedral and aimed at healing the wounds of history and building a culture of peace. The Cambridges met members of the choir before having a cup of tea with staff and volunteers at the Rising Cafe, a social enterprise aimed at providing work and opportunity for those overcoming drug and alcohol addictions. There, they were confronted by a spectacular array of cakes, including a princess one with a tight era and a Union Jack cake, baked by volunteers and addicts in various stages of recovery. William said that Charlotte would like the princess cake, and described the Union Jack one as very patriotic. He added, you should be on Bake Off. But he reserved his greatest praise for the chessboard cake, with chess pieces on top. Rachel Campbell, one of the bakers, said, he said that when he comes back he is going to tackle these cakes, especially this bad boy. In the cafe, which is run by the charity Beetle UK, the Duchess spoke to former addicts including Kim Gardner, 44, who now runs Beetle's women's houses. She said, I came from a broken home and was addicted to heroin for close to 11 years. I have been in prostitution, I have been in prisons. She said how amazing it was that you have changed your life. She said how they want to get to addicts earlier, by doing more with families. M.S. Gardner, who lives in Birmingham, also revealed how the best planned royal visits can have slip UPS. We put almond milk on the table, because we had read that she had it. She said. Don't believe everything you read, I don't even like almond milk. Cafe manager Philip Galboyer, who spoke to William, said, We talked about Cyril Regis. He said he was an iconic figure for black footballers. He added, He is an Aston Villa supporter. I gave him a bit of stick about that, being a Spurs fan. Next stop on the royal schedule was the innovative training center for nurses, midwives and paramedics at Coventry University where the Royals officially opened the Pound's 59 million facility. William and Kate toured the institution's new science and health building. At the facility, students learn to care for patients at every stage of their medical journey, from paramedics arriving at their house to their stay in hospital, through to their rehabilitation at home. William and Kate also met students before following the journey of a fictional patient through the various areas of speciality taught at the center, visiting a paramedic ambulance simulator operating theater, rehabilitation area and adapted living houses. It's the only facility of its kind in the UK where students can learn to care for a patient at every stage of their medical experience through a simulation approach. William and Kate rounded off their day by seeing firsthand the work of the organization Positive Youth Foundation in the city. The foundation works with young people who find themselves living in challenging circumstances, from those excluded from school to others at risk from a range of social issues.